Everybody tells me to be more thoughtful. Well, I'd like to be more thoughtful. If I only knew what it meant. Why should I worry about being thoughtful? What will it get me? In this world, it's every man for himself. How do you go about being thoughtful? What do you do? Every time I try, I only make things worse. Is there some particular method of being thoughtful that works every time? Yes, everywhere you go, people talk about thoughtfulness. Well, just what does thoughtfulness mean? How does it fit into your everyday life? To discover some know-how about thoughtfulness, let's follow Jane Proctor into her home. For the Proctors are one family who have learned the art of thoughtfulness. If we watch carefully, we'll see just what thoughtfulness is, why the proctors think it is worth the effort, and how they do it. Mom! Oh, Mom! She's not here, Jane. Oh, hi, Eddie. Mom's downtown. Oh? She left a note if you want to read it. <laughs> she always leaves a note. Dear Jane and Eddie, I've gone downtown to pay the insurance premium. Please take... Say... Something's funny. Mom doesn't usually take care of the family business. Please take the ground beef out of the freezing compartment so it will be ready for supper. Ground beef? I forgot. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Amy. He's right here. I'll take care of the meat. Thanks, Amy. Hi, Amy. All set for the party tomorrow night? <laughs> Well, that takes care of the... Eddie, what happened to you? Amy's grandmother is sick. They have to visit her over the weekend. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope she gets better right away. But tomorrow night, the party, you'll miss it. That's what I mean. Too late to ask another girl now. Well, it'll be tough on Amy, too. I wish I could help. But tomorrow night... Tomorrow night? I've got to do something about a dress. You girls have one track mind. I haven't a thing to wear. I thought Mom was going to fix up the blue dress. The one you used to say was a dream. Used to say is right. Now it's a nightmare. Oh, well, it's a dress. You'll manage. Say, your things are all over the place. Why don't you pick up? Oh, and I forgot to straighten my room this morning. That was thoughtless of me. Take your jacket along. Save a trip. Yeah, and the books, too. Let's see. Jacket, book, scarf, upstairs. First, straighten the sofa pillow. That's the way. Better than wasting time flying from one thing to the next. I'll get your book. Eddie. You know, Mom will most likely be late. Let's get supper ready. What do you say? Thought you had to straighten your room. Oh, don't worry. I will. Here's your jacket, too. Listen, if you peel the potatoes and set the table, I'll do the rest. Good deal. I'll take your books, too. Thanks. Well, it's nice to see you working. Well, you better put an apron on, though. All right. Say, what are we going to have to eat? Let's see. Mashed potatoes, ground beef patty, salad. Put lots of onion in my ground beef, will you? Uh-huh. You like lots of onion. But Dad doesn't like any. No? How do you know that? Oh, I don't know. I just seem to notice little things people like and dislike. It's kind of handy when you want to do something for someone you like. I can see that. Yeah. But I don't think I could learn to do it, though. Why, Eddie, you do. I'll bet when you meet a new 
little girl, you notice everything she likes. So you can be nice to her. Well, you can do the same thing with your family. Marlene Davis. Huh? The new girl at school. She's in your English class, isn't she? Oh, yeah. She is. What about her? Well, they just moved into town the other day. She won't have a date for tomorrow night either. You two should get together. Yeah. That's a swell idea. Ah, oh, I can't ask that girl this late. Why not? It's no reflection on her that she hasn't a date. It would be the thoughtful thing to do. I bet she'd be glad for the chance to get acquainted. Well, I guess it would be thoughtful to introduce her to the others. But, well, it just won't be easy to ask her. Well, I'll go out and set the table now. Information? I'd like the number of the Davis family, please. They just moved in. No, never mind. sure glad you got it. She's out in the kitchen now. You can take it upstairs. Oh, Eddie! You got the best of this deal. Oh, yeah. Oh! Is the table all set? Almost. Give a fella a chance, will ya? Boy, Dad, I'm sure glad Mom got it. Just wait till Jane sees it. What's the matter, Eddie? You look worried. Amy can't go to the party tomorrow night. There's another girl I could ask, but... You think it'd be a bit late for asking anyone, eh? Oh, that isn't it, Dad. I mean... Well, Marlene's just new in town, and... I think she'd understand the late part of it all right, if I explained. Well, then, how would you feel if you were in her place? I guess I'd be glad to go. That's a pretty good test, son. Put yourself in the other person's place. Maybe you're right, Dad. Besides, she's kind of nice. I'd like to get acquainted. Well, now you tell her that. She won't feel like second choice at all. Marlene? Well, Marlene's folks will want to meet you. Why don't you run down there after supper and meet her folks and explain the whole thing? Good idea, Dad. I'll do it. Eddie! Look at these folks are coming in. They're here now, Seth. Here? Oh! Come help me then. Mash the potatoes. Do something. Well, here's the last of them. Well, I guess Mother and I can do the dishes. Yes, it's certainly our turn after that nice dinner you fixed. Goodness, what a wonderful surprise that was. The most fun was watching your faces when you saw dinner on the table. Oh, yes, that made everything worthwhile. In fact, that's what makes thoughtfulness worthwhile. Well, I'll go out and start on my homework now. Where'd you put it, Mom? On her bed. She'll find it in a minute. It's the one she wanted, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mom! Dad! Eddie! She's found it. Come on. Oh, Mom! Dad! It's beautiful! <laughs> Eddie, look! Oh, so that's why you went downtown this afternoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Insurance premium poop. Look at my little sister. Is Jimmy a lucky fella? Mm-hmm. But how did you know? I mean, it's the very one I wanted. Eddie seemed to know what you wanted. He insisted we get that particular one. Eddie, you knew all the time. Well, I saw you ogling at the store window. I couldn't help see you were crazy over it. And you said you didn't know how to be thoughtful. <laughs> Here, wipe your face. You think you're still chopping on you. <laughs> Eddie? What if Jimmy and I double dated with you and Marlene? Yeah. Be swell that way. Well, why don't you go over there and ask her now? Yes, right now. Okay, see you later, folks. But now I'm really going upstairs to do my homework. And we've got dishes to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we've got a pretty nice family. 
kind, thoughtful family. Let's drop. There, that's real balance and poise. The teamwork we're watching represents one of many ways to build balance and poise, along with skill, strength, and general physical fitness. And there are other things to be gained from this sort of activity. And to find out what they are, let's meet some of the members of this group. This is Ernie Allen. Note the well-developed body. No surplus of soft fat. Here's Hal Thompson. Notice his alertness, his bright interest. And meet Jean Taylor. She's a living example of poise and confidence. Anyone in the acrobatics club could tell us a story of how much he has gained from it. But we'll concentrate on these three. Ernie. And Jean. And Hal. First, Ernie. A year or so ago, Ernie was in a rundown condition. He always seemed to have a cold or sore throat. Any sickness that was going the rounds was bound to get Ernie. And sometimes there were more serious illnesses. Finally, as Ernie was recovering from this one, the doctor suggested a three-point program for health. Sleep, regular rest, right eating, a sound, balanced diet, and exercise when Ernie felt stronger. Ernie's instructor gave him the cues. Don't overtire. And while Ernie built himself up for the time when he could actually play basketball, he was learning the skills of the game. As time passed and Ernie grew stronger, he increased his daily quota of activity. And it's important that it be regular. And Ernie tried some exercises to supplement his sports program. Here's one to build up those abdominal muscles. It wasn't long before Ernie began to feel the benefits of his regular exercise. A little exercise every day. Here's a trunk stretching exercise to strengthen the nut muscles. See how the hips act as a pivot. Ernie still has a cold now and then, but now that he's stronger, he can shake off illnesses more readily. Ernie found that he could build good health and enjoy it. And certainly everyone here has sound health. Exercise builds good health. What about Jean Taylor? What's her story? We've remarked on Jean's poise and self-confidence, but not so long ago, Jean felt lethargic and awkward. And feeling awkward, well, Let's see what happens. Yes, Jean was pretty shy. 
Jean wondered if she could do something to make friends easier. A couple of days later, she was still wondering. And then she saw one way other people make friends. That's right, engage in sports. But no, Jean wouldn't dare. She'd be so clumsy and awkward. But the point is, of course, that you have to learn how to play. Jean thought she might try it. Maybe once she learned the skills of the game, she would gain poise and self-confidence. So Jean finally took the big first step and got started with some physical activity. Besides badminton, Jean used simple exercises to build control of her muscles for better posture. Here's a good exercise to develop poise and balance. It's called a tour jeté. Over a period of days, try to increase the number of times you can do this before getting tired. Jean's exercises improved her badminton and her poise. She had started out wanting to meet a few people, to make friends. So when Hal invited her to join the acrobatics club, don't think Jean wasn't pleased. Yes, Jean made social contacts and friends. That's another way exercise has helped. Jean's a happier girl, as well as a healthier one. Now, what got Hal started with the acrobatics club? He has plenty of social contacts, and he has enjoyed fairly good health. So what was his need for physical activity? Not long ago, Hal was all work and no play. He took his studies seriously, which is all right, except that he didn't give himself time for anything else. Study, study, study. And then, after school, a job, filing papers. And that work is no more active than studying. So it's not surprising that Hal began to make mistakes. He had a steady diet of thinking, and he had no release for nervous energy. He became tense and irritable. He needed some other activity as an outlet for his emotions. Some activity more strenuous than shutting file drawers and holding books. Hal had to find out for himself that he needed physical activity. Then one day he found this passage. Physical activity can provide excellent release for nervous tensions. Exercise increases the rates of respiration and circulation and serves as a stimulus as well as a release for nervous tension. The pleasing tiredness that follows exercise promotes complete relaxation. Well, to Hal that meant just one thing. He determined to have a program of exercise. So, after talking it over with his physical education instructor, he learned a few exercises that led him to an interest in tumbling. Try this to stretch the muscle fibers and tendons at the back of your knees. Go easy at first, until you feel the stiffness leaving. Hal usually spends some time chinning to strengthen the muscles of his upper arms, shoulders, and back. By taking time for some exercise every day, Hal finds an outlet for his nervous tension and does even better work at his studies and on the job. What of the others of this group? Why are they here? Probably their reasons are similar to Ernie's and Jean's and Hal's reasons. Perhaps they want exercise to increase their strength and endurance and to improve their balance and flexibility. Perhaps they want to establish outlets for their emotional tensions. Perhaps they want to gain poise and self-confidence and meet new friends. Of course, tumbling is only one of the many ways to obtain exercise. Athletic sports involve team play and team competition, and so are especially good ways of building health and releasing emotional tension. These activities bring large groups of muscles into action and train groups of muscles to work together. 
and milder, less vigorous sports still have the advantage of outdoor activity. And although not everyone can take part in team athletics, almost anyone can find some source of exercise with little or no equipment. Talk it over with your physical education instructor or your doctor. It's up to you to see that your body gets the activity it needs for better physical and mental health. <laughs>